This, my friends, is bergamot. It is a small citrus fruit, and if you take the rind of this citrus and you make an essential oil out of it, that oil can be used to flavor Earl Grey tea. You can see right there, tea and natural oil of bergamot. A couple years ago, I found bergamot at a market, and I tried to make my own Earl Grey tea by drying out some pieces of the rind, mixing it with Assam tea, and then, and then brewing it. And it didn't really work. It wasn't a strong enough flavor. So I wanted to try this again, but using a different method by uh, trying to make an extract with this. So that's all I wanted to do. Something real simple. Make Earl Grey tea. However, <laughs> when I was researching how to do this, I realized that since I made my last video, the internet has decided that this is not bergamot anymore. Bergamot is now something else. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna put in bergamot. Search. Okay, so this is not bergamot. Next one, Ford Brewer, not bergamot. Next one, another one from Ford Brewer, not bergamot. This one by Naomi Whittle, that is bergamot. Uh, good job, Naomi. Next we got Adam Barillet, that is not bergamot, Adam, I'm sorry, no. Michigan Gardner, uh, wild bergamot, that's not bergamot, he's talking about something else, which is a flower. This one, that is definitely bergamot, it's also one of my videos, so, um, yeah. This is Ford Brewer again. Ford, what are you doing? Badger Balm, that is bergamot. Good job. Not bergamot. Joe Cannon, you got it right. Very good. You Healthy Calm, no. Not bergamot. Not bergamot. Not bergamot. You got it. Very good. Not bergamot. Not bergamot. That is a completely different fruit. That is a citron. Health Nut Owl, I believe you are talking about a rain per lime. Not bergamot. Not bergamot. That is bergamot. Bergamot oil extract, believe it or not, actually does have a picture of actual bergamot. Good job. BK Sense, no. Christian Dior. Yeah, you got it, Christian Dior. Good, you did your research. Not bergamot. Christian Dior again, you got it right. Stop showing off. That is bergamot, good job. Not bergamot, not bergamot. Stash T, not bergamot. What's going on there? Perfume Lounge, you got it, very good. Not bergamot. Now I'm getting just like a lot of photos of products. Uh, Health Benefits 24 is holding a product that has a picture that is not bergamot. Uh, Nature's Garden. Not bergamot, not bergamot, not bergamot, not bergamot. The art of shaving, not bergamot, not bergamot. Uh, that's not bergamot, but I don't know what that is. Not bergamot, not bergamot, not bergamot, not bergamot, not bergamot, not bergamot. The best bergamot is apparently not bergamot. That's not bergamot. You got one. You got, it's not just stock footage, but you don't know what it is. That is not bergamot. This one by John Dooliard is interesting because he says bergamot and amalaki. Uh, that's not bergamot and that's not amalaki. Both plants that you're talking about are incorrect. Okay, so I could keep going, but I'm starting to get into like that corner of YouTube. It's starting to get kind of weird, so we're gonna stop. When you search for bergamot online, nearly every photo that comes up is of some like health guru along with stock footage of a green bumpy citrus. That green bumpy citrus is not this. How do I know that? Because I've had that green bumpy citrus before. It is something else called a macroot lime. So let's talk about the macroot lime for just a minute. You may have heard your grandpa refer to this as a kefir lime, but the word kefir is an offensive term. It's actually a racial slur in South Africa for a black African. Giving fruits and vegetables uh, an offensive name is nothing new. Uh, eggplants, some people used to call those Jews apples. There's also a Jew plum. 
Uh, don't even ask me what Brazil nuts used to be called in North America. Some people argue that with the kefir lime, that use of the word kefir actually follows a different etymology than the word that is used in South Africa. However, it is such an offensive term that a lot of people want to change it. When I say that this word is offensive, I mean it's really offensive. So much so that in South Africa this is referred to as the K-word, and using this word can actually get you in serious trouble. There is a law there known as crimen injuria, which basically means that it is a crime to remove the dignity of another person. Usually the penalty is like a fine, however there are a few cases where people have actually been arrested. In 2018, this woman right here, uh, Vicki Momberg, called a black officer the K-word 48 times, and she got thrown in jail for three years. Makrut is a far friendlier name for this citrus here. Uh, Makrut is actually the Thai word for it. In Thailand, as well as other parts of Southeast Asia, the makrut lime is used for cooking, the rind of it, and the leaves are used in a lot of curries. It's also used sometimes as a natural cleanser. And when I found this fruit, I actually found it at a flower market where people were selling it more as a potpourri. These things smell fantastic. I had no idea why this citrus was getting confused with the actual bergamot. So I actually took this question, I asked a few fruit hunter friends of mine. Uh, one person that got back to me was my friend uh, Stephen Murray. He said that the reason why people use photos of the Makrut lime to describe bergamot is because the Makrut lime just looks cooler. However, I think there's more to it. I believe that I have solved the mystery of why this is getting confused with this. While I was fact-checking the name on this one, that if you take K word lime and you put it into Google, if it would come up with Makrut. And it does. Makrut. So I saw that, I was like, great, that's true. But then I tried something. Instead of putting the K word lime in there, I put in bergamot to see what happens. What do you call bergamot in Thailand? Makrut. Yes, both citruses have the same name in Thailand. And using that information, I managed to find a couple of instances online of people actually calling this citrus a Thai bergamot. That is another name for it. It's not as common as makrut lime or the K word lime, but it is a word for it. It's Thai bergamot. So here's what I think happened. Health gurus, bloggers, people who are just reselling bergamot oil and other medicinal things, they knew bergamot was good, they didn't know what the citrus is because they're not growing it, they're just reselling it. So they go to Google and they search for stock images of bergamot and when this comes up they're like, that's just a lemon, that's not what I want, I want a nice sexy photo that will draw viewers in. So they keep searching and searching, trying to find a picture of bergamot that will suit their needs. And eventually, because the Makrut lime has the name Thai bergamot, and because you can actually translate bergamot into the Thai language as Makrut, photos of the Makrut lime came up. And when health gurus and bloggers and resellers saw photos of the Makrut lime, they're like, oh, damn, yeah. That's a good photo. So they used that photo, even though it's wrong, because of that confusion. This isn't anything new. A lot of times, fruits are being sold with the wrong name. Uh, my favorite instance of this is this fruit right here. This is Arbutus unido. It has a common name of strawberry tree fruit. This is a different fruit, completely unrelated. The species on this is Myrica rubra. However, it also is called strawberry tree fruit. They look a little similar, but they're not the same. However, because they share a common name with each other, the Myrica rubra is very often sold under the name Arbutus. It gets that name from the other fruit because they share a common name. 
because people would search online, they'd see that, they'd see that name, they'd match it up, and then they'd put the wrong name on the other product. It's really confusing. This stuff makes me crazy because I am trying to put factual information online, but because of all this misinformation and mislabeling, it makes my job really, really hard to document fruit. It's not just YouTubers and bloggers that are perpetuating the misinformation about bergamot. When you search for the word bergamot on YouTube, the first result that comes up is an episode of Dr. Oz where he had a segment on bergamot oil. This is a national TV show watched by millions of people. You'd think that Dr. Oz would have at least some fact checkers working on the show. Let's take a look. Today, a new oil that you are not using, but you probably should. It could be the natural remedy you need to relieve your pain and melt away your stress. It's called bergamot oil. And it's from a citrus fruit that's a hybrid between an orange and a lemon. No, it isn't. 15 seconds into the episode and he's already made a major mistake. Bergamot is not a hybrid between an orange and a lemon. Bergamot is a hybrid between a bitter orange and a lemon. A bitter orange and an orange are not the same thing. They are different species. Bad. Bad Dr. Oz. Bad. Okay, continue. In Italy, where bergamot is actually from, believe it or not, it's been used for centuries to help reduce fever, to help fight bacterial infections. So this powerful little fruit has a lot of history. That's not bergamot. So let's uncover the biggest reasons why science says you ought to be using bergamot tea. The first is that bergamot oil may help alleviate pain. So let's go visit Desiree. Yes. Desiree says she gets tightness in her upper back, in her shoulders, all the things that so many folks complain about. That's not bergamot. I'm always tight in my shoulders and in my lower back. So. All right, so, Dr. Tess, how can we help all the folks with shoulder pain? Yeah, you may not realize this, but bergamot oil is such a great alternative to so many of the over-the-counter medications that we have today. It can help everything from a muscle ache to headache. Okay, so I'm not going to argue about whether or not bergamot is good for you or if there's any health benefits to bergamot oil. I don't have any medical training. I'm not qualified to give that kind of information. But, as a geek, who knows a lot about fruit, I would like to point something out. That photo right there is crooked. We're gonna take a carrier oil. In this case, we chose coconut oil. So you take about a teaspoon of your favorite carrier oil mm -hmm. and you add about five drops of the bergamot oil to it. That's so right all here. we're gonna do is rub it in directly. How does that feel? It feels soothing and just so relaxing. Wow, very convincing. Next up, bergamot oil can reduce stress and anxiety. The recipe here is about a half a cup of water to 20 drops of the bergamot oil. The product that Dr. Oz is touting on his show has the picture of the wrong fruit on the bottle. Does that mean that there is macroot lime inside that bottle? Is it macroot essential oil? It's kind of confusing. It's like if you go to a store and you buy a can of red kidney beans, and instead of red kidney beans on the cover, it has a picture of a fish on it. It might say kidney beans, it might have in the ingredients kidney beans, but it's suspicious. I'd like to think that the company that's making the food that I eat knows what the product looks like. You know, it just, it makes you look foolish, Dr. Oz. And then what do you do? You and just you just spray? mist it in the air. So this is such a fun and easy thing to do. I love to do it in the shower or do it in a bath and then take that time to breathe. So I know I said I'm not going to talk about the health benefits of bergamot oil, but I feel just for like safety's sake, I should point out that although Dr. Oz says that it's okay to rub this on your skin, there are articles online saying not to rub it on your skin. Uh, here's a quote from an article. Like many essential oils, when aerosolized, bergamot oil has been said to have a calming effect and to improve positive feelings. Many online sources also claim that bergamot oil is good for a variety of skin conditions. However, you should be more cautious when using bergamot oil in this way. Evidence supporting these claims is currently lacking. There is one study that found that bergamot oil in combination with UV therapy can reduce the dose and duration of treatment for psoriasis. 
However, in general, bergamot oil is considered a phototoxic substance. This means that when put on the skin, bergamot oil can make you especially sensitive to light and can cause a painful inflammatory reaction similar to a very bad sunburn. So what does this mean for you? If you want to add some flavor to your tea or want a safe way to improve your mood, drinking or smelling bergamot oil may be a good choice for you. However, if you're thinking about using the oil on your skin, it's best you decide not to and instead talk to your doctor about safer ways to manage your symptoms. That's some good advice. Oh, wait a minute. That article is on Dr. Oz's own website. Yeah, even though on the show he said that you could put it on your skin, I mean, remember how enthusiastic this woman was about it? How does that feel? It feels soothing and just so relaxing. Well, on his website it says the complete opposite. It even has a clip from that episode at the top of the article, but it doesn't include the part where it's being rubbed on somebody's skin. It only talks about spritzing it in the air. And as far as it being used as like a calming spray, sure, it bergamot smells really nice. You know, a lot of essential oils are used that way. I don't see it as like a big breakthrough, something to write a big article about and have it as a segment on your TV show. I mean, whatever. I I don't understand, and honestly, this is really giving me a headache right now. I'm actually going to have to take a Tylenol <laughs> because of bergamot oil. <sighs> Why is there a fish on the bottle? So what do you look for when you're getting bergamot oil? In the case of bergamot, we want to make sure it's from Italy because that's where it originated. Also with bergamot, it should have the active ingredient citrus bergamia, which is what gives it all these great properties that we're talking about. Citrus bergamia is the scientific name for bergamot. So when you say to make sure that there's the active ingredient of citrus bergamia, that's like saying to make sure that there's bergamot oil inside the bergamot oil that you're buying. You know what? Fair one. I, I honestly wasn't too sure. I mean, the bottle has a picture of something else. Your entire set is covered with pictures of something else. So I was kind of expecting that that bottle would not have bergamot oil in it. So. You win this round, Dr. Oz. And last but not least, we want to make sure it submitted itself to third-party testing, because that's how you know what's in the oil is really in the well, oil. If you're not going to memorize all that, <laughs> just go to DrOz.com, or you can check Dr. Taz's book out, Superwoman RX, oh and use the guide, the oil guide I've got on my website to make sure you get the right stuff. We'll be right back. No, you should be sure that you have the right stuff, because from the looks of it, you don't know what bergamot is. And this guest that you have on that wrote a book with a chapter on bergamot also doesn't seem to know what it is. I mean, come on, the least you could do is fact check this or hire somebody to fact check this because when you're trying to sell a product and you don't even know what the product is, it makes you look stupid. And it makes me wonder if you even know what you're talking about. I don't really trust you because of that. And it doesn't seem that you actually do know what you're talking about because you contradict yourself on your own website. You might think that I'm overreacting here and that there isn't really a whole lot of harm in showing the incorrect photo when you're talking about something else. Well, you're wrong. There is a lot of harm in this because if you go out and pick up an essential oil or a supplement thinking it's something else, you might get the wrong product. Somebody might go out and buy Macrute Lime and do things with it that you're supposed to do with bergamot, which I don't think that's a huge danger necessarily, but it's definitely not a good practice. You can take the wrong dosage of something, you can apply it in the wrong sort of way because you think you have a different product. Essential oils are very often on poison control websites. It's something that if you abuse them, if you take them the wrong way or take too much of it, it could actually hurt you quite a lot. It can poison you. So uh, yeah, it's something to take seriously. It's something that you want to get your facts straight on. And the worst thing about it is it just perpetuates misinformation and that wastes my time. I just wanted to make a cup of bergamot tea 
and instead I had to go down this big stupid rabbit hole thanks to the internet. Uh, so I hope that clears things up about what this fruit is. This is bergamot. This isn't. Let's make some tea. I would like to give a shout out to Smarter Every Day, AltPod, and the Harbor Leaf Tea Company. They are mega patrons over on Patreon.com. If you haven't heard of it, Patreon.com is its how this channel happens. It's how I can afford to keep this YouTube channel going. So if you haven't checked it out, please take a moment to go into the description below and click the link there. Uh, I also have t-shirts for sale over at my web store. A link to that is in the description as well. Thanks so much, guys. Bye-bye.